I've been tagged in this particular post a couple of times and people have sent it to me and some people by now have already given their commentary involving this young woman whose name is Kalasia Brooks, but she goes by the name of KJ the Activist. And this video that went viral where she basically for almost four minutes straight went in on the uh, board of police commissioners, as you can see right there in the title. And when I tell you that she went in, she went all the way in and i'm going to play the entire audio for you but before i get to what i think what made this more interesting is the fact that who she was talking about was there and present at the meeting it's not like whoever she talked about was not there so they can't say oh she did it behind their back or she didn't have the guts to say it to their face and she said she literally went in on everybody and did not skip a beat but i'm gonna go ahead and play this audio for you and you'll hear exactly what everyone else has. Fair warning. Um, I'm not nice and I don't seek to be respectable. I'm not asking y'all for anything because y'all can't and won't be both my savior and my oppressor. Um, I don't want reform. I want to turn this building into luxury, low cost housing. These will make some really nice apartments to me. Firstly, stop using black children as photo opportunities because they're cute now, but in 10 years, they're black male suspect in red shirt and khaki shorts. Eating cookies and drinking milk with children does not absolve you of your complicity in their oppression and denigration, Rick Smith. Because Kansas City will spend more on police than education and then try to encourage children to feast with their oppressors. Y'all are really weird. It's asinine to be called radical or homegrown terrorists for not wanting government employees to kill citizens in any instance. So I'm not here begging anything of soulless white folks and self-preserving black folks. You get one life and you all in this room have chosen profits over people and that's pathetic. So I'm going to spend the next two minutes reading y'all for a fill, something I'm sure nobody has ever done. Nathan, the gentleman in the vomit colored men's warehouse suit in desperate need of Bosley in a haircut, a former FBI agent who exudes white privilege and is the epitome of mediocrity and who loves Trump so much that he hired his former attorney general at his firm. And it's so sweet because he spent most of this meeting looking away with his head in his hands. Or Mark, excuse me, Pastor Mark of Victorious Life Church on 34th and Paseo, where the mission is to provide a place and opportunity to worship Jesus Christ and preach a message of hope and faith through God's holy, holy word in the building. Meanwhile, he's subjecting black people to terrorism and unchristlike behavior at the hands of KCPD outside the building. And Kathy... Miss, I'll get here before the other commission members, so I look as if I have empathy, and I'm excited to hear what they have to say. Meanwhile, I didn't have anything else to do at 8 o'clock in the morning but be rich and white and retired, so I'm here early. Or Don, owner of Wagner Investments, Blue Notes LLC, and part owner of the Royals, another rich and white and disconnected and out of touch person with nothing but pure apathy seeping through the bulging veins of your paper-colored skin. You age like trash when you're racist and subject others to violence. And David, you don't get a vote, but it'd be a shame if your really progressive students at UMKC Block School of Management knew you were a cop lover in 2020. I don't think they would be a huge fan of that in 2020. In 1960, maybe, but this is 2020. And Q, had I not spent the entirety of the last six months dragging you, I would have more to say, but I don't. And Rick, I won't even begin with you, because I don't care enough about you Ma'am, your time to is start, up. but you will have to spend overtime in a chapel at the end of your life. You have blood on your hands, and while these idiots hold you on a pedestal, God does not honor injustice and murder. Anyways, I'll leave you soulless, profit-driven, avaricious, greedy, God-forsaken humans, including anyone who works in this building, with one Bible verse from the Bible detailing the life of Jesus. Jesus Christ, who was another unarmed black man murdered by authorities in the book you hellbound people claim to love so much. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? You're really funny. Kiki. That's it. Okay, so y'all just heard that right there. Okay. <laughs> um, 
what can I really say? What's interesting about this is that you can tell that this woman, and she's 20, by the way, she's 20. You can tell that she has really studied these individuals like the back of her hand. Like she's, she knows them inside and out for her to come up there and say what she said and put all of those individuals on blast the way that she did. And the way that I know she did her research on these people is because I saw another video earlier who was talking about this and they did their little breaks and interjections in between. And what they did was for every person that she talked about, they interjected something about the person in which she was referring to and even pulled up an example of what she was talking about as it related to every person she went in on. So she knows exactly what she's talking about. And that's what the citizens have to do. You have to know who is in these positions. You have to know not just your politicians, but also people like who's on this board of police commissioners. You have to know who they are because you because if something comes up, you need some kind of proof or something to hit them hard with when something arises, like how she was able to hit them with. She probably knows for a fact that everything that she said went in one ear and out the other for them. But she said that I'm going to get out everything I need to say about them right here, right now. And you can tell she was prepared because the very first words that came out of her mouth and says, Fair warning, I'm not about to be nice. I don't know if y'all caught that in the very beginning of uh, before she went into her uh, rant. And this isn't the, you know, before I go any further, notice one of the people who was, I guess, like the person over this whole situation, this whole thing said, ma'am, your time is up. But she didn't care. She didn't stop. She kept going. She wasn't going to leave from that podium until she got every word out. And she was reading off of her phone like she she typed down everything that she was going to say because she didn't want to miss anything about what she about who she was about to go in on. And this isn't the first time we've seen black people assert themselves in a position where it was in this type of setting. If you all remember, there's been two instances that happened over the summer. The first one I remember and I talked about it in a video. Both of them I did a video about, as a matter of fact, there was a black man who went to some kind of a town hall meeting. And I think it was in uh, Louisiana where he had put some people on blast. He put one uh, Karen on blast so hard that she had to end up getting up from her computer and walking out because he had put her on blast for the simple fact that while he was talking, he could see in the reflection that she was on some kind of website that were. I don't think it was Amazon, but it was some website where she wasn't even paying attention and completely ignoring and being ignorant to what this black man was saying as if she just couldn't give a damn about what he was saying. And he put her on blast because of that. Another instance, of course, was another black man. I think this was down in Florida who had put another Karen on blast when he was on some kind of a board. And I think he was like the only black guy up there. And he went off. He went from he went from Carlton Banks to to Nino Brown in like a nanosecond on her and some of y'all probably remember what i'm talking about because i did like i said i did a video on both of those instances and now you have this situation here but they couldn't really cut her mic because this is pretty much an open panel and they're allowed to go in on them as a matter of fact one of the funniest ones i heard this year but i don't think this really deal, dealt with a lot of black people was uh it was in california where they where people was allowed to call in and because it was a virtual thing, so they were all just sitting up there. It looked like one big roast session. And one person, you know, had called in, and they that's the part that made people want to go and listen to the whole three hour. It was like a three hour long thing. I might even go and see if I can find that because from what I heard, they said that that thing was hilarious. It was like one big roast session where they just sat up there and they just was going in on those city officials and not even to be funny or in a comedic way, but it's because people are fed up with how their cities are being ran by these individuals not doing what they were put in position to do all they do is the complete opposite of what they're supposed to do and collect a check and go home at the end of the day and then go come back to work the next day and do the same thing over and over and over again in hopes to get reelected if there's a position for them to get reelected to just so they can continue to do what it is that they do so it's not like these people are coming up there to roast them or go in on them just for the sake of it or just for the hell of it. They're doing it because people are mad. They are upset. It's like we we are the taxpayers and most of our money goes to you and, and, and you're supposed to be a public servant. And, and this is what you give us. So, yeah, like I said, this video right here, this audio that you heard 
has made its rounds. Like, I don't think there's many people who have not yet seen it. But, you know, like I said, people are mad. People are upset and rightfully so because they're tired. And if they don't get it together, well, let's just say it probably won't take another shooting of an unarmed black individual for people to rise up. It'll just happen. But y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments.